Hello, my name is Lassi Nurila from Finland, F3A pilot, maybe somebody know me if you are following F3A. And here is Glacial model. I'm a builder and designer of this. And at the moment many pilots have this kit and maybe for them it's difficult to know how to install those wings and landing gear mounting and also horizontal stabilizer because those are not pre-made, you have to do those by yourself. So I want to make this video where I show you how I do it, so maybe it's easier for everybody then. Okay, so let's start building. I am going to start with the swing back mount pieces. And first I want to mount these standard M3 blind nuts to these holes. And it, it seems that this will not fit. So maybe there is some mistake by designer already. This, this seems to be 4.2 mm, so I'm going to use 4.2 mm drill bit and open those holes a little bit. And you can clean those holes with these. Okay, now it fits. And here is these spikes. And I don't want to make any holes here. And I will not cut these spikes. I will just bend these like this. Of course you can use some other kind of blind nuts, but this is what I have used. So normal M3 screw will fit. And because we are going to glue these into these holes, I want to make this surface a little bit more rough. So I am going to make some like holes with this. Remember to use safety glasses. Okay. So then we are going to glue these blind nuts to these. And I'm going to use just a normal 30 minute epoxy. You can use whatever glue you want. I like to use this screw here, so it's easier to hold this because we don't want epoxy on our fingers. The hole is very tight, you can use example these to press it. Now maybe maybe look. So, hopefully 
you got this kind of template with the kit. This is very important. Example, this is for the aileron servo hole. This piece goes to here. And don't glue this because you, you have to change it from this side to this side depending on which side servo hole you are doing, right or left side. So it's like this. And this is for the uh, elevator control horn, especially if you are using pull pull elevator, then this is important. For the if if you have a servo inside the stab, then this is not so useful. But maybe you can use it still. These, these three pieces goes like this. This is important. We make the uh, stab tube hole with this. This is the pin for the incidence. And these are uh, elevator pull pull wire, wire holes. Maybe we don't, at, le at least in this case, we don't use this. This is for the rudder pull pull wire hole. We will use this. And this is the rudder control horn hole. We will use this too. So this piece from here goes through this hole like this. And these two, these are both same. This goes to these holes. You can use screwdriver to help you. Like this. And like this. Okay, we will come back with this, but now let's move to the next step. These two pieces are for the wing front mounting. And first, I want to do it. And these edges because these are not looking very good now. Okay, I think it's fine. These plastic pieces, we have to first glue into these holes. So let's let's clean these. Let's okay. This should fit here. Okay, this, this is very good. It's almost like a loose. I want to take this aluminium tube to put it here. To hold it. I will put a little bit CA here. Like this. Maybe there is already too much.
This is the top wing front mount. I think we must sand these little bit shorter. I take this sanding block and just I make it so that it's about one millimeter over, like a similar like this side. So this piece, it should come from this side through this area. So these two pieces should come out from these pots. So we must make those holes. I like to just uh, hold it here find the location like like this and then I make some marks here like this and there is let's say three millimeter uh, flat area, so we'll, we will make the hole in the in the middle of this this area here. I'm going to use this. I think this is 1.5 millimeter end mill. I think this is fine. You can use whatever tool you like. So let's go. <laughs> And finishing by hand example with this flat file. I think it's starting to be pretty cool. And yes, of course, for this plastic pieces. We must do some room. I think I'm going to put it like this. So this more wide area goes to the wing side. starting to be pretty close. I think I will sand these a little bit more. Yes, this side this side have to be more white. I think it's very close. I think this uh, surface should be around in the middle of the hole. So I, th I think it's very close. If it if it don't fit, sometimes you have to sand a little bit. Example from these edges here, usually not in the middle, but sometimes from here you have to sand a little bit. to check if this is even close to the 
center. I think it's pretty close. Let's see how, how wide is this? It's 18 millimeter. So I suppose it should be 9 millimeter from here to the center of the hole. So let's try. Now it's about maximum. Let's see if it's it's enough. Yes. It's perfect. Then we have to uh, open also from this side so that the mounting tube can fit from here. Okay, it's fine. Okay, these are ready. So let's move to the next step. Okay, then we are going to install this bottom wing, front mount piece. Same idea like the top wing. This piece goes to inside and we are going to make these two holes here. I am going to use this kind of sticker template here to make those holes about in the correct position. I think it's close enough. It doesn't matter so much. So let's make those holes. If you have a fully painted kit, usually I have already made these two holes here. If not, you can make those by yourself. Just take the measurements from this piece and to get the distance between these holes. Let's try if those holes are even close to the correct position. Seems to be pretty close. You can feel it from this area if it's good or not. I would say I have to go just a little bit to this right side, but not much. Now I'm gonna make these holes a little bit bigger so that this plastic piece can come through the holes. So I think I will make some marks here. I think it's pretty good now. I want to make those a little bit bigger so that I have a little bit room to move the wing to find the perfect position. Oh, 
Now I will attach this wing with a piece of masking tape. Now we can see to here. And looks like we have to open those holes a little bit to this side. It's not far. And we can also try with this, if this will fit or not. Almost. Almost. Many times in this area there is a little bit epoxy and micro balloons here. So these don't fit so well. So many times I have to sand a little bit from this area. Like this. I made small angle here. Maybe it's better like that. I think it's starting to be pretty good. Okay, next step is to make those holes into this tail, tail area. So, this template should, should go like this. This should touch to this surface and those triangle pieces should go into this inch slot. Like this. And we are going to make this hole and this. And this is for the rudder control horn, and this is the pull pull wire hole. I will use this uh, two millimeter end mill and I'm going to use this this area here there is no cutting tooth uh, so that it touch to the edge of the plywood and I will follow the edge so, I will show you. Maybe you can use a piece of masking tape to, to make sure that this is not moving. And of course, it's important to uh, fix this rudder, for example, with a piece of masking tape, so that it's it's in the center and straight and not moving, so that we get a very precise position for this template. And better to double check everything.
this and for this wire hole I will use smaller one millimeter tool. So done, and now we do same for the other side. One thing that I just noticed is that when plywood is not straight, like this, and when this is, this should touch to this surface, and when you bend, this plywood, it will kind of change the position of this template. So make sure that you do both side, sides similar way. So example, when I did the first side, side uh, this, this corner was like, like this touching to this edge so I must do same for this side so now this tube socket should go into this hole. It almost fits, but not quite. So I'm going to sand it. Yes. Now we are going to start with the bottom wing. So it, it's good to take the plane on the floor and you can have, attach the wing with a piece of masking tape. And first, just feel here if you are happy with that. Then you can check the measurements. I always do like that using this spot here and put the wing tip. 816 and same for the other side 816 and then I, al I always measure from like this and after you are happy with that we are going to drill these two holes. I will use this kind of aluminium washers and we are going to use M3 screws and for that I will use 2.9 millimeter drill bit and my idea is just to hold this washer here in the correct position I think it's fine there and then we are going to drill then we can remove the wing I will make these holes a little bit bigger. Maybe this is not necessary, but I like to do this. Then we have a little bit room to move the wing if we have to when we do the gluing. And it's 
the shorter one it seemed to fit just perfect and here we also have a little bit of room to move this if we, if we have to. Uh, same for the top wing. We check the measurements from here. And here. And here. And after you're happy with that, then you can bring the holes. Of course you can fix this with the masking tape, it's much easier then. And So before we glue these pieces, I will sand, sand these a little bit. So this is the step tube and I like to put screws to the both of these ends and now I will glue this kind of bomb plastic pieces to the both ends. I think this is not very good for gluing so we must make this surface very rough to at least get some mechanical lock so that it will stay there. So let's go. Okay, then we are going to install these landing gears because that fuselage is pretty narrow so we must cut these a little bit so we must take 5 millimeters from both Okay, then we are going to drill those holes 
This is standard Falcon landing gear, and you can see there is already those marks. So we will use these two and this third, because it is so close to the edge, we will not use this. The third position will be end of this slot here. So we will drill the third hole here. And I will use same M3 blind nuts. So I will drill 4.5 millimeter holes. Okay, let's go. Holes are done. Now I will prepare these blind nuts and these for the gluing. So I remove paint here, now it should be pretty good. Okay, I lost the video where I glue the landing gear mounting, so I go quickly through the process. So these three pieces, you can glue these together on the table. This is the horizontal part, these are the vertical parts, like that. And it should fit pretty well in the fuselage. Normally I don't have to send anything. Only important is the right location. So it should be 70 millimeter from the leading edge of the bottom wing to the start of the landing gear, so to this surface. And uh, I think in, in like this direction it will not move. The fitting is so good, but it can a little bit rotate like in this roll axis. So I every time measure like this with the caliper to make sure that it's level. I always use this piece of tape here. I think it's important uh, to measure from the same spot. So same uh, distance from both sides because this uh, canopy frame, it's not same level. It's not parallel together with the landing gear. So if you go more that way, it goes more down and it is not so precise anymore. There have been peel ply in the fuselage, so whatever you are gluing inside, you can do it right away directly on this surface. You don't have to sand anything. Now I'm going to make a hole for the landing gear. It should go like this. So I'm just going to mark like this. Where is the front and the rear? And then I just measure Like this.
Okay, now this is done, and now we do the same for the other side. Landing gear holes are made now to both sides. So now we are going to glue those blind nuts onto landing gears and screw everything in place to see how it goes. I screw these wooden sticks to both of these landing gears and with those I can measure if these are like too much back or too much front. So now we are going to glue these blind nuts. Okay. And now we are going to screw these in place like this. Now those can move. Bit. Like this. So now I am going to measure if those are straight and I will move if I have to. And then we are going to tight those screws. So I measure it from here. Now this is 5, 1, 2. And from back it's five one four so it's pretty close only two millimeter difference so I I think it's fine and I always try to put it straight or maybe the front a little bit more narrow but not much and then I measure from the step tube and like this, and it's exactly the same. So now you can... ...check that the screws are tight. Yes, so now landinger mounting is done. Very easy. Now I am going to make aileron servo hole and control horn hole we are using this template this is very fast and easy process and same idea I will use this 2 mm uh, end mill and follow this hole and same with the uh, control horn hole and I think especially here it's important that your tool is not too long otherwise you will go through the uh, aileron. So one way how you can check it is to put, put it like this and take your aileron control horn and check from here if it's enough. And I don't recommend it to go much deeper than this. In my case, I put just in case pieces of balsa about one millimeter because I cannot adjust much this length because I have to use this area without those 
tools. So let's go. So this is the bottom wing and it goes like this. Uh, this plywood piece goes to this hinge slot and all the way to the end, end of it, like this. And there is plywood pieces inside the wing already. And here, where is the control horn position, there is balsa piece. So you must use this template. If you are not familiar with this, of course you can put example piece of tape on the wing. And then just with a pen you can mark the area and use some other tools to make those holes. But I will, I will do it like that. So let's try. servo I made this kind of sticker template to cut this hole and also for the control hole and actually I I modified this template a little bit like this and then I was able to use same technique here as I use for the aileron control horns now I'm going to put this. In the horizontal stabilizer, here is this hole for the stab adjuster. And as you can see, uh, this hole have a same shape with this, so it goes that way, and you have to make a little bit room for these set screws, and one other important thing is to not tight these screws too much, because this sandwich board is very weak. Now I'm going to make a servo wire hole. It should be 165 mm from this trailing edge and about in the middle. And I'm using the same technique. I have this template here. Now I'm going to glue these aluminium tubes. First, a little bit sanding. Then we are going to measure, I think 10 millimeters. 
uz pieprasī kūtu. Paktīs. Ok, all the fillets are done and I, I fill all the small caps, example here, with the epoxy. And then I glue this piece of plywood on the rudder servo mount. I think it's very important, this PVC foam sandwich, it's not so strong, so use plywood. And also 